everybody. I'm Paul Snemiska, your estate plan counselor, coming to you with another KML Foundation Table Talk vlog and podcast. You know, today's episode is going to be very special for a couple of reasons. First of all, I've chosen the topic of Social Security, and I know there have been a lot of questions and concerns about Social Security, and so I thought, really, this is a topic that probably is very timely for a lot of people. Secondly, my guest today is, is truly a specialist in this area. Elita Alonzo serves as the Social Security Administration's Public Affairs Specialist for Southeast Wisconsin. And so she clearly knows her stuff and it's gonna be a great advantage for us to hear the information that she can share. Now, the other thing is because of COVID restrictions, Alita was not able to join us in person. And so the format's gonna be a little bit different today because we've got her zoomed in. She was, she was so kind to be able to do that for us, but the format's a little bit different, but I think the information is still gonna be really practical. So let's get started. Welcome Alita. Glad to have you here today. Thank you for asking me to be here today. I'm excited to talk about Social Security and the benefits that we offer. Perfect. Let me just start with a very basic question, Alita. What is Social Security and what is the program designed to do? Okay. Well, Social Security was the law that was signed in 1935 by Franklin Roosevelt. And at the time, it was part of the New Deal that was meant to get um, people out of the Great Depression. So during the 1930s, the Great Depression. So what was happening is that people were reaching retirement age and they were not prepared. They didn't have savings. There was no continuing um, benefits that they could receive or payments once they retired. So if they didn't have any savings, family was having to step in to take care of them. So this was designed for the people at that time, it was retirement age people to receive a benefit. Um, but it has become by far the most successful program, um, domestic program in the U.S. of all time. So a lot of people receive Social Security benefits. Currently, 65 million people are receiving benefits in the U.S. right now. So that's exactly what it was intended to do, and that's exactly what it's doing. That that's wonderful, and I think most people do see the benefits of Social Security. But Alita, you mentioned a number, 65 million. I'm going to assume, based on that number, that not everybody qualifies for Social Security benefits. How does that work? That's correct. So um, the people that are eligible for Social Security benefits are people that are retiring. But we've also, over the years, we've added other groups of people that can qualify. So in 1939, we added the survivor benefit. So currently 95% of people aged 20 to 49 are covered in case they pass away, their family would be able to receive benefits. So we have the survivor benefit. In 1956, the disability benefits were added. Currently, 89% of the population between the age of 21 and 64 is also insured and covered if they become disabled. In 1965, we added the Medicare benefit, which is the federal insurance program. And then in 1972, SSI, which is the supplemental security income. So altogether, about 177 million people in the U.S. are covered for Social Security for one benefit or another. And one out of four of those people receive a benefit other than retirement. That really is amazing, Alita. For today's topic, let's just stay focused on the retirement benefits. I, I know there are many other things. Let's just stay focused on the retirement benefits. So who can get those retirement benefits? Okay, so to be eligible for the retirement benefits, a person has to be age 62. So that's the earliest that the person can start receiving the benefit is at age 62. But you also have to have worked and paid into Social Security a minimum of 10 years or have earned 40 credits. So that's basically as long as you've worked long enough and become insured for the benefit and you're age 62, you can receive the benefit when you're ready to file. So we're talking a variety of ages, I imagine a variety of income of these people. 
how does the Social Security Administration calculate the benefits that, a, that an individual would receive in retirement? Okay, so although I said that the minimum um, that you need to be eligible for retirement is 10 years, mm -hmm. when we actually do the calculation, we take your lifelong earnings. So everything that you've earned since you were a kid and you started working up until you stop working and you're ready for retirement. So we take those lifelong earnings and pick out the highest, or first of all, the first step is that we um, index those earnings or adjust them for inflation. So once we have those earnings adjusted for inflation, we pick out the highest 35 years. So although you only need 10 years, we do use in the computation 35 years. So that means that a person who has worked the minimum will have 25 zero years added into the computation. So once we take those high 35 years, um, we, do, we add it to the formula and we come up with the primary insurance amount. That's the amount, or we call it the PIA, that's the amount, that's the base of what you could receive if you wait until your full retirement age. So that's the maximum that you could receive it at your full retirement age. If you take it earlier, you'd get a, a smaller benefit. If you wait later, it would continue to increase until 70. So it sounds like if people worked longer or made more money or waited longer to retire, they would get more benefits. That's correct. Um, the full retirement age has changed over the years. So people born before 1937, their full retirement age was 65. Now people that are born after 1960, their full retirement age is 67. So as the full retirement age has um, increased, so has the reduction. So a person that is full retirement age and takes their benefit at their full retirement age will get 100% of that benefit, that base amount that I talked about. But although the person is able to take their benefits at age 62, that's going to cause a permanent reduction, anywhere from 25 to 30%. So yes, every month that you wait, it continues to increase your benefit. So if you are able to, it's a good idea to wait and to take your benefit to increase the benefit over time. Sure. Growing up, Alita, I remember retirees thinking that maybe they had a small pension from their employer and then Social Security, and that was enough for them to live on. What if someone came to you today and said, will Social Security provide all the funding I need through my retirement years? How would you respond to that? I would respond, no, it's not going to provide the, okay, so experts tell us that for a person to live comfortably in retirement, they're going to need between 70 and 80% of their pre-retirement income. Social Security will only replace between 30 and 40% of their pre-retirement income. So Social Security was never intended to be the only source of income after a person retires. So it was meant to be a base on which to build on. So besides the social security benefit, people um, may have a pension that is going to help to make up that other percentage that social security will not replace. And we tell people, you know, look into your 401k, make sure that you are contributing to that. Um, besides pensions, there are other incomes that are considered um, that could help you. A real estate, investments, stocks, bonds, a lot of other things that are going to help you reach that goal. But planning is the most important thing. That's why we help you by giving you information on what you could receive at what age so that you can use that when it comes to planning. Because um, the way to reach your goal is to start early and to plan for the future. So I would say Social Security is a part of it, but not all of it. You know, Alita, that is really well said. You know, we say that we say this quite often on this vlog, that we're not giving you financial advice. We're giving you information so you can make a good decision for your own situation. There's no way you or I could tell somebody when they should start taking their retirement benefits from Social Security or what the amount should be. But we can give them the information that can help them make good decisions. So we always encourage people, 
get a hold of your own personal financial planner, understand Social Security is a nice piece, not the whole piece. Correct. And there are many factors, and it's um, really a very personal decision. There are many factors that contribute to making that decision. Things like your health, um, your financial situation. Uh, sometimes people think of maybe there are other people that will be drawing benefits along with you. And what about work? If you're still working, we have income limits to how much you can make when you work. So those are all things that contribute to that decision. Um, but we want to give you the tools to make that decision as far as we can. Am I correct then, Alita, in saying that if somebody has a question, they could contact somebody at their local Social Security office to get some of this information to make a good decision for themselves? Sure, yes. Um, that's we ask that you call our nationwide number. Our nationwide number is open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And they're happy to help you with estimates. But really, if you don't want to wait online and you don't want to wait on the phone, the easiest thing to do is to go online and set up a My Social Security account. Mm -hmm. and, and I can tell you just from personal experience in some situations, the workers at the Social Security Administration offices really are very accommodating and helpful. Uh, I've been impressed in a number of situations I've had. So um, Elita isn't just saying this as a representative of Social Security Administration. Um, I, I can vouch for that. Elita, there's, there's been a lot of questions and a lot of debate about Social Security's future. I think some of the young people in particular question whether that will even be around when they retire. How do you respond to somebody say, what is the future for Social Security? Well, the future for Social Security is that I believe that it's going to be around for many, many years. So we have two funds. We have the Social Security Old Age Survivor Fund, and we have the Disability Fund. So the only way for us to pay benefits is for there to be money in those funds. So over the years, um, those funds have come to the brink of depletion, but because of changes that Congress has made, um, like in 1977 and in 1983, we were able to continue to have money in those accounts and continue to pay full benefits. So as the way things are right now, we are able to pay 100% of all benefits through 1930 or 2034 if Congress does nothing to change things, and I believe they probably will, but even if they don't, we would still be able to pay 79% of all benefits going forward. And the reason that this is changing, that more money is coming out than in the past, is because we have more, we used to have more people working. Back in 1960, we used to have 5.1 persons working for every person drawing benefits. In 2020, we had 2.8 people paying in for every beneficiary. And in 2035, it's estimated that 2.3 people will be working for every person drawing. So yes, things are changing. And I believe that um, Congress will make changes. If you go on our website, socialsecurity.gov, and go to our actuary page, you can actually see the different proposals that are being talked about. So I do believe that benefits will be around, and I do believe that Congress will do something to keep the benefits going at 100% past 2034. I'm, I'm sure that that's the intent. It looks like probably Congress is going to have to act to make sure that that's extended for future generations. Correct. Thank, thank you, Alita, for, for joining us today. This is a very short summary of Social Security and what the benefits are for people that are either approaching or in retirement age. And I, and I certainly expect that this was helpful for you. But before we end, Alita, is there anything you'd like to add? Yes, I want to go back and talk about the My Social Security account. So on our website, you have the ability to set up a My Social Security account. And I want to encourage anybody who's over the age of 18 and has ever worked to go and set up a My Social Security account. Because if nothing else, if for no other reason, um, to see your earnings that we have posted. Every year we post the earnings on there. 
and we want you to check those earnings to make sure they match your record. It's easier to fix missing earnings or to add missing earnings from a year or two ago than having to wait 15, 20 years and find out that there's earnings that are missing from there. So we encourage everybody to go on our website, set up a My Social Security account. Even if in the past you tried to set it up and it was you weren't successful, we've made things much easier. So we feel that many more people will be able to set up that account. And there are many things you can do on there, even if you don't receive benefits. You can get a replacement social security card. You can check the status of your claims. And um, the most important thing is check that statement that we used to send out yearly. Now you can go right on our website and get that statement yourself. So we encourage everybody to do that. Very good. I, I, great advice, Alita. Once again, this is, I think, very practical, very timely. There's so many people today of all ages that really are wondering how Social Security is going to affect their lives. Again, I'm going to mention, don't rely just on these vlogs and podcasts to get all the information to make good decisions. We are giving information, but these are general principles and guidelines. You have to find out the specific decisions that you're going to make that are going to benefit you in your situation. So we always encourage you contact your own professional advisors, make sure that they can guide you making the right decisions for you. And again, we do this because it's your life, it's your plan, and it's your legacy. Thanks again for joining us. We thank you, Alita, for being here as our Social Security go-to person. You guys have a great day. We'll see you next month.